Hey, Foundry Church, this is Phil. Happy to be with you for devotions on day four. So before we unpack this passage, we're going to do a little code-breaking exercise. You ready? See, here's the thing. With some of these Old Testament passages, the language and the vernacular that was being used, it would have been very familiar to the original audience, but with our modern ears, it might not uh, connect. We might not understand everything that we're hearing. So we're going to do a little code-breaking. And no, the Bible doesn't use a secret code, but there are just some meanings behind some of these phrases. So let's unpack them a little bit real quick. If you hear daughter Zion, it's talking about the Jewish people. If you hear Ephraim, direct reference to the northern kingdom of Israel. If you hear Jerusalem or Judah, we're talking about the southern kingdom. If you hear Greece, it's referring to the enemies of Israel. The river would have meant the Euphrates, but in this reference it could be to all of the earth. Waterless pit kind of harkens us back to that thread, that storyline of Joseph and Jeremiah who were both placed in a pit, all part of God's plan. So let's go ahead and read Zechariah chapter 9, verses 9 through 13. It says this, Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will take away the chariots from Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem and the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace to the nations. His rule will extend from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will free your prisoners from the waterless pit. Return to your fortress, you prisoners of hope. Even now I will announce that I will restore twice as much to you. I will bend Judah as I bend my bow, and I will fill it with Ephraim. I will rouse your son, Zion, against your son's Greece, and I will make you like a warrior's sword. So this was all written by the prophet Zechariah, and he was writing this passage during the reign of Darius I of Persia. And Darius ruled between... 521 and 486 BC. And the Jewish people during this time, they had just been allowed to return back to Jerusalem so that they could rebuild the temple. But the work was very slow going. And see what was going on the people, they were very just inward focused, too self-focused you could say. They didn't have a good perspective of what God was doing. They couldn't see the big picture. And the fundamental ideas of the whole book of Zechariah are twofold. First, Spiritual restoration must happen before social or political restoration. And secondly, God's presence is the key to restoration. Exactly why Zechariah was just so laser focused on rebuilding the temple. So you may wonder why this passage is even included at all in devotions because it was written 500 years before Jesus, right? And we had to do so much decoding just to understand what these references were all about. But what we see here is that it's of prophetic importance, and we'll unpack it more in tomorrow's devotions. But for right now, we just wanted to concentrate on what it meant at the time Zechariah was writing it, and how it applies to you and how it applies to me. See, in this passage, God reveals that it is through him and him alone that there will be peace and victory. Zechariah understood that God's peace and presence was necessary for such restoration. And that's why he was instructing everybody on how to rebuild the temple. What he could not have guessed, though, was that once Jesus came, paid the price for our sins, sent his spirit, God's presence would no longer dwell inside a building. His spirit now dwells inside of us and dwells inside all believers. God's presence is still the key to restoration in our lives. It is the key to restoration in our families, in our cities, and in our country. So, major question, as a believer in Jesus, you have his spirit within you. So where are you bringing restoration by the power of God's presence?